That's the most amazing thing really about the cross, right? Or about what Jesus did is he chose us. And so he chose you freely. A friend chooses you freely. And that, that's what really uh, makes a true friend. It's not forced. It's not because they have to. But if somebody is your friend, it's because they chose you freely. Well, uh, we're back in Proverbs tonight. And remember, next Sunday night, we have Scott Fraker gonna, is going to be here. So I think you guys would really enjoy that. So I'd love to see you come back next week. And uh, then we are, uh, the last two uh, Sundays of the month, we're going to jump back into the topic of the month, which is uh, the topic of friends, friendships. And that's what I want to kind of focus on the month of February. The, uh, the, the book of Proverbs has a lot to say in regard to this issue of friendships or friends, so I wanted us to examine it. You know, um, we're so busy anymore in life in general, Um, but I think that friends are something that we need in life. But if we have a to-do list of life, I think a lot of times friends tend to be down at the bottom of that list, or making friends or having friends, but I think they're really, really important in our lives, Um, and so I think that they should be made a priority. Your friends can really make or break you in a lot of ways. So What I wanted to do tonight was just define, give you a definition of what a friend is, what a true friend is according to uh, the Bible. And we always want to look at the Bible to find out the definition of things, so to speak, because there's a lot of, uh, I would say, there's a lot of interpretations or a lot of people say, well, this makes you a true friend or this makes you a true friend. What does the book of Proverbs say? What does the Bible say that uh, really are are the characteristics of a true friend? So I pulled out six today because I don't, there may be more, but I think that this is about the limit as far as the book of Proverbs is concerned. But these are six traits. If you uh, display these to others, then you are a true friend, or or if somebody is treating you this way, then uh, you have a true friend. And I've I've heard people say before that if you die and you've had one good friend in your life, you will die a lucky man or a lucky woman. So they're very, very difficult to come by. Um, but I do believe, before I say all of this, that I do believe that there's no friend like Jesus, okay? And he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. So there's no friend like Jesus. And everything that I will talk to you about tonight, Jesus epitomized in his life and in how he treats us. And that's what the Bible talks about, how that um, we are the friend of God, all right? So it's a beautiful thing. Um, so I just, I don't want to uh, not talk about that, but I, I want you to understand that, that I believe that as children of God, as people uh, in the family of God, that this, there's a certain way that we should treat each other. And, in, and if uh, we are the friend of God, God is our friend, then I think there's a certain way that we should treat one another. And so this kind of lays it out for us about what true friendship is. So there's six of them in the text. One, in uh, in the text, I'm talking about in the entire book of Proverbs, but but the first one and the first two kind of come from the same verse, all right? And that is Proverbs 17, 17. And if you go to the first point, I'd like for us to all read this verse together. So let's read Proverbs 17, 17 together. Ready? A friend and a brother is born for adversity. So one... The first trait of a true friend is they choose you freely. They choose you freely. Now, you can really kind of classify people into two categories. And what I mean by that, or I guess three in in that regard, but two is what I wanted to focus on tonight. Now, there's blood. Like, I'm a Doss. Uh, I was born to Stan and Sharon Doss on June the 9th, 1969. June the 10th, 1969. I got married June the 9th, 1990, but uh, I was born uh, June the 10th of 1969. So uh, Stan and Sharon uh, are my parents, and I'm family. I have two brothers, uh, John and Stephen. So these these are 
my, this is my, in a sense, my family. This is my blood. They will always be my family, and family is family, and family is a priority. You know, the Bible talks about a brother is born for adversity. Um, a brother is, is stuck with you. I mean, S- Stephen and John are stuck with me, whether they want to be stuck with me or not. We're, we'll always be associated by blood, in this, and the same thing is true with my parents. I'll always be their son, no matter if they don't want me to be their son anymore, or, uh, or anything like that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm family. I'm blood, so to speak. But a friend is different because a friend chooses you. So, you know, this is a lot of times what we do when it comes to marriage. And this is, you know, this is why I think that you should not only pick someone. I talked a lot about this with the kids in the second hour today. But you should not only pick somebody that you are attracted to physically, but you should also pick a friend. Because things change, bodies change, looks change, but friendship remains. It endures. And this is why you really want your mate as your friend. Um, And so... One of the beautiful things about a friendship is, and if you have a friend, that means that they chose you. They weren't like family where you, you had to be kind of in the family because your bloodline is associated, but a friend chooses you. That's the most amazing thing really about the cross, right? Or about what Jesus did is he chose us. And so he chose you freely. Not because you're particularly all that special, or I'm all that special, but we were chosen by God. So a friend chooses you freely, and that, that's what really uh, makes a true friend. It's not forced, it's not because they have to, but if somebody is your friend, it's because they chose you freely. Then it says, uh, the second thing I like you notice is a friend loves at all times. So two, the second characteristic or trait of a true friend is they love you unconditionally. They love you unconditionally. When someone loves you at all times, good and bad, and they don't have to, they choose to, that person is a friend. There's times in our lives where we're pretty lovable people, right? You know, I mean, most of us, okay, a few of us. Um, that, but, but really, the test of a friendship is not if somebody loves you at your best, it's at if they love you at your worst. They love you unconditionally. That you know, they know everything about you and they still choose to love you and that's what makes a true friend. And that's what that's what the uh, writer of Proverbs was saying, a friend loves at all time. It's easy to love when times are good. It's it's the test of a t- friendship to love when times are bad. And that's what a true friend does. A, a true friend loves when, when everybody else is, you know, in a, in a sense, everybody else is walking out, a friend walks in. And that's what it really means to have that kind of a friend is they love you unconditionally. They love you in spite of your flaws and in spite of your quirks and in spite of your things that drive them crazy. They love you unconditionally. And that's what it means to be a friend. It, you know, we... we we don't just love people when things are well, we love them when things are difficult. And so this is, this is the second emphasis in the book of Proverbs. It says, if you have a friend, it's, that friend chose you freely. If you have a friend, they love you unconditionally. Number three, the third characteristic of a true friend is they forgive you quickly. They forgive you quickly. So, the te- so uh, Proverbs 17, 9 says, he who covers a transgression seeks love. Now, this is not advocating covering up a crime. Okay, let me just make sure that, that we understand that. So it doesn't mean that somebody does something morally or ethically wrong and we, we cover it or we hide it. Um, you are, at every point of your life, going to do things to other people, wh- whether you intend to do that or not, and you're going to hurt them. You know, it would... So if you, were, if you were in second hour today, I talked about my wife from the pulpit, which always is a, it's not a bad thing in the sense that, it's 
Sometimes I just go with it, and sometimes I shouldn't go with it. Okay, like I don't necessarily write everything down that I'm going to say. I, I like to be led by the Holy Spirit. I think sometimes I'm led by Satan. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mean that there, I say stuff that I shouldn't probably say. And I didn't, I didn't offend Karen, and she didn't get in the car today and go, we need to talk, mister, or anything like that. Um, but I did kind of say it second hour today, and I, get, I did kind of wish that I wouldn't have said it, you know, and, and sometimes in an attempt to be funny or to get a laugh, you, you just say stuff and you wish later you could change it. And um, so, but I, I know that there have been times, like she was not offended today, or I don't believe that she was. Um, <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, but I know that there have been times where I have crossed the line or I have um, really said stuff that was personal and didn't need to be talked about publicly. And so, so Karen has a choice, right? And the choice that she has is she can hold that against me and she can make sure that I know that I pay for the wrong that I've committed her or she can cover that transgression. And, what do you, and she covers it with forgiveness, because there's a lot of times I do stupid stuff, and every married couple in this room knows what we're talking about. We do stupid stuff, and we say stupid things, and, and we don't even realize what we've done. And so either it needs to be pointed out to us, or uh, the person just says, you know what, they did it in ignorance, I forgive them. And that's what really true friends do, because if you hang around each other long enough, you're going to offend one another. You know, it's... It's just like, if you don't want to offend people or you don't want to wrong people, then you need to be a hermit. Because just when you, the more that you're around somebody, the, the greater the odds that you're going to offend them. Now, as a, as a, you know, when you develop friendships, you want to be with the person. You want to be with the person that's your friend. But the more you're together, uh, the more you kind of learn people's quirks and their differences and things that kind of annoy you. And, and the greater the possibility that you're going to offend one another. So if, if you're a friend, though, you forgive quickly. The easy thing to do is to hold a grudge. The easy thing to do is to be bitter and be resentful. And this is what often happens with our friendships because we develop a friendship with someone and then they hurt us and then... Um, there's no, there's no uh, basic, look, look, you did this and it offended me, and there's no desire for reconciliation, and our relationships just kind of drift apart. And that's why I think there has to be honesty in relationships, which we'll talk about in a minute. But you are going to offend one another, and it requires um, covering a transgression. He that, covers, he that covers a transgression, he that doesn't bring it to light, he doesn't... Um, you know, you don't go to somebody else and say, you know, Mar Mark did this, and boy, he sure is a moron. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't broadcast it to everybody, but instead, I forgive them whether they ask for it or not. And that's what really I think the writer of Proverbs is saying here. And this is what's essential to healthy friendships, is that you have to forgive one another quickly. It is sad that oftentimes the people that we hurt the worst are the ones that are the closest to us. You know, I think we're very guarded in our speech when we're talking to people that we don't know. But the more comfortable we get with people, the more we kind of feel freer to be ourselves, which means we're probably going to say something that will be offensive or say something that will be hurtful or do something that is hurtful. So what's required on friendships is this area, is this process of forgiveness and forgiving people for the, the way that they have wronged you. Number four, the fourth characteristic of a true friend is they counsel you wisely. They counsel you wisely. And this is found in Proverbs 27, 9. Ointment and perfume delight the heart, and the sweetness of a man's friend gives delight by hearty counsel. So how do you know that you have a good friend? Okay, they give you advice that, ends, that results in you making a good decision that then you look back with gratitude on the fact that this person really helped you through a tough decision or a tough time. So they counsel you wisely. They don't 
always tell you what you want to hear, but they tell you what you need to hear. That's a friend. And, you know, counsel is, is a tough thing because I think a lot of times, you know, we, we, we bring people into our circle and we're just trying to get them to affirm to us that what we're doing is the right thing. But a, a friend says, okay, this is a better way. And I think you'll get to the end of the road here and realize that this was a better choice. And that's what a friend does. A friend gives you counsel. And they counsel you wisely. And, and they do it out of love and they do it out of concern. And this, is, this really defines what a true friend is. So one, they choose you how? They choose you freely. Two, they love you unconditionally. Three, they forgive you. Four, they counsel you. Number five, they correct you respectfully. They correct you respectfully. Let's read Proverbs 27, 6 together. Ready? Faithful are the... But the kisses of an enemy, y'all were writing your other notes, weren't you? (laughs) Okay. How about we read it again? You ready? Everybody done writing? All right, here we go. Faithful are the... But the kisses... No, I read this today, and I... I, um, Initially, when I read it, I didn't agree with it. But now that I think about it more, I do tend to agree with it. You know, biologically, I don't need a friend. I have family. I don't need a friend. Uh, financially, you can thrive without a friend. In fact, if you don't, the less friends you have, the more money you spend on yourself. Um, but this is the deal. You cannot become wise without a Christian friend speaking into your life. So... So biologically, I don't need a friend, and financially, I don't need a friend, but if I want to be wise, I need a friend. And sometimes, when people speak truth into your life, it can be painful, and you don't really want to hear it, but the wounds of an honest friend are faithful to help me grow. And that's what a true friend does. And this is where I think that we start, I think you, 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 you hear the first four points and you're like, I agree with that. This is where friendships fall apart. Because real friendships will correct you. And this is where oftentimes we don't like being corrected. I don't like people pointing out my faults, okay? I don't like people pointing out areas that I need to improve. Although I want them to, I don't like it. Can we all be honest? I mean, who, who is like, you know what? I just love it when people tell me how I've messed up. Because we ultimately do things because we think it's the right thing to do. So, but this is, this is why I think that we don't really have a lot of friends because we're so afraid there's two kinds of people. There's the people who they, they kind of try to come across as your friend, but they just want to hurt you. And they just say brutal things because they know it hurts you, and they enjoy it. If you enjoy hurting someone, that you're not a friend. Okay? But then there's the people that genuinely love you, and they correct you respectfully. And that's the difference. And I think faithful are the wounds of a friend. It is hurtful. It does wound us, you know. It's, I always thought my parents, my dad uh, did a great job kind of as I got older, you know, and I got out of the house and became independent. And I was independent pretty fast once I got 18. You know, I kind of got on my own and got pretty independent. And I was doing a lot of dumb stuff, you know. Because this is what 21-year-olds do. And I was great, I'm was i grateful that my father would pull me aside and correct me respectfully. I knew that he loved me and he's just trying to help me and he wanted me to be a good husband to Karen and a good... And man, that can be kind of that fine line, can it, you know? But I'm grateful for a dad who loved me enough to do that. 
And you know you got a friend if they'll hurt you a little bit to help you, to correct you, to point out areas that you're making mistakes. And that's really defines, I think, that's really where the, the, the line in the sand and where peop, very few people will cross it. Um, because all of us have elephants in the room and we don't want to deal with them. We all have these uh, things that are holding us back and, and we need a friend to come alongside of us and say, let me help you get over the hump here. So friends will correct you respectfully. There is a big difference between someone feeling loved and someone being loved, and there is a big difference between hurting someone and harming someone. You know, you go to a doctor and you have a surgery, he hurts you. You know, I've had uh, surgery on both of my knees. They did not put, they did not, um, put me under because it was going to be a joyful experience right? It was going to be painful, and they didn't fill my body with drugs because it was going to be pleasant. But I'm telling you what, two years removed from my surgeries, I'm glad that I did them. It was hurtful at the time, but it was helpful in the end. And that's what a lot of times friends are. Um, they hurt us, but they're, they're hurting us to help us. And what we do then is when a lot of times when people hurt us, then we want to finish that, we want to figure out how to punish them. And this is where friendships fall apart. And you have to understand this person is help, is hurting me because they're trying to help me. They're speaking truth to me, even though I don't want to hear it. And then number six, the final uh, thing that kind of makes a person a true friend is they challenge you regularly. <laughs> I can never say that word. Regular L-Y. I just mumble it all together. So it's up on the screen. Um, true friendship, uh, let's read Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. A real friend will provoke you and challenge you. You know, I, I'm, grateful for, I'm grateful for all of our pastors. I'm grateful for every pastor that we have. And I feel like that we have a certain degree of freedom with each other and speaking to each other. And, and um, you know, I, I'm grateful for Jeff. And I'm glad God brought Jeff here. And, I mean, Jeff was just in my office before I came out here, and, and he gave me some things he kind of pointed out some things that maybe I could do better from this sermon this morning in the sense that this is how you could end the sermon. Because I, I never feel like I end my sermons well. Like, I feel like it's like a, I never know how to land the plane, so I just kind of crash land it. And I've always felt that way. And I think Jeff understands that, and he's, and he's given some things that has worked for him or some things that I can, that I can um, maybe do better. And you know what that said to me when I was in there? And he was kind of giving me some advice. It said, he's my friend. He's challenging me. A, a true friend will provoke you and challenge you. Now, this is the deal. You won't agree with everything your friend says, but you'll want to listen. Because you know that they're your friend. We all need that. Our own our own family background left each one of us a little weird. So we need an honest friend from outside the tightly knit family to round us out. Every one of us needs to go to one person and say, help me see myself. Help me be sharper for Christ. And that's... that's I'm grateful Jeff's my friend, and I'm grateful Steve is my friend, and I'm grateful Joe is my friend. I'm grateful for the friends that God has placed in my life who challenge me, and who ch we challenge one another and make us sharper for Christ. And you need friends like that. Now, a, a true friend 
will put you will put an edge on your life. False friends dull your life, blunt your influence, and drag you down. Anybody who makes it easier for you to do what is wrong is not a true friend. One of the true tests of any friendship is asking yourself, am I a better person for having known this person? So these last two points to me are the big ones because you'll know that you have a real friend if they challenge you. If they don't enable you, but they challenge you. They challenge you to be better. They challenge you to, to strive to do more, to, to, to uh, be more excellent in what we do. They, they push us maybe sometimes out of our comfort zone and, and help us be the people that God gifted us to be. So this is what makes a true friend. And if you have a friend like that, uh, I, you know, we're gonna have, we'll have a couple of moments of invitation. If you have a friend like that, um, thank God for that. And let me tell you, if you have a friend like that, you hold on to that friend for everything you got. Don't just surround yourself with everybody that tells you what you want to hear. Surround yourself with people who, who care deeply for you want to see you live a well-rounded life and, and have those kind of people in your life. And not only that, but you be a friend. Be a friend. And so that, that's really how Proverbs defines it. And so uh, if you have friends like this in your life, be grateful for them, hold on to them, uh, keep them around as long as you can. If if you don't have those kind of friends, then I want to challenge you to be that kind of a friend. And when you become that kind of a person, then you attract those kind of people in your life. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. And Would you just bow your heads where you are? And, and God brought you here tonight to, to worship with us, to sing, and to hear the word tonight. Um. However God spoke to you, whether God challenged you to be a friend to someone, even if it's difficult, or maybe your just heart is filled with gratitude for the friends that God has placed in your life, would you just thank him? Father, I thank you for the time that we've had tonight. I want to say, first of all, Lord, I want to thank you for being my friend. I want to thank you for knowing every single thing about me and still loving me and still pursuing me and still caring deeply for me. Thank you, Jesus, for your friendship to me, for being closer than a brother. And Lord, I want to thank you for the many, many friends that have helped me in this journey of life. For the friends when I was a young man, when I was fresh in ministry, I thank you for the friends that have helped me through the difficult phases of my life, the friends who have been my friends for a short amount of time and those who have been with me for years and years. I couldn't have done life without them. For Karen, who's been my friend for years and years, for, well, a lot longer than we've been married. So I am grateful, Lord. And I'm grateful, Lord, for friends who uh, told me a lot of things I didn't want to hear, who spoke truth into my life, who corrected me when I was out of line. And I oftentimes push those friends away. But I look back now and I, I'm grateful for them. So I pray for all, everyone that's here. I pray that 
we would be defined as being a friend. That we would be defined by really genuinely caring for the people around us. And so, Lord, give us wisdom as we speak to one another, as we interact with one another. Help us not just to uh, be companions, but help us to be friends like you. And so we're grateful for it. We're grateful for what we can learn from the book of Proverbs. Help us as we leave here to live it. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.